Let's Explore Science. WOI-TV, in association with Iowa State Teachers College, brings you another in the series, Iowa TV School Time. Here is your instructor for today, Mr. Walter Goldman. Uh, good morning. We've been having a lot of fun with this mysterious little bottle. Uh, John, show them what you can do with that bottle. Can show them? Why, well, he talks to it. Then a little. Will, will it obey? Oh, oh yes. Can you stop it? Right in the middle. middle. Why, well, it does just what he wants it to. Go in the middle. Well, that's a well-trained little bottle, isn't it? Go to the top. No, you could make one of those and have lots of fun with your friends. What Don't you think you could? Yeah. Now, you said you were going to make one as soon as you got uh, home. Now, before we go on with our program, probably you'd like to meet these young people, these fine young people we have on our program this morning. Do you want to give your name and uh, your school so we'll all be acquainted? I am Bonnie Gerke and I'm from State Center School. I'm John Goodman and I'm from State Center School. I'm Jane Hillam and I'm from State Center too. Oh, I see. You're all from State Center. How far did you have to come this morning to get to be on our program? About 20 miles. Yes. You told me you never thought you'd have an opportunity to be on television. Here you are. Yeah. Well, now, um, this clever little trick that John was performing, you want to do it again? See if it still works. Can you make that bottle stand right in the middle, John? Yes, I think so. There it is. Well, that's uh, quite a mysterious trick. Well, but say, look here. I think somebody invented that before we did. Let's take a look at our fish in the aquarium. Can they stay right in one place without paddling their fins? Yeah. Well, they have our little trick, don't they? Yeah. Is that trick a mystery, or can you explain the trick that we have over here with the small bottle? Yeah. Bonnie, can you? Well, uh, I think this, this, there's air right you want here. To? And when you push on this, well, the, there's pressure on the water, and that pushes more water up into the little flask and, and makes it go down, makes it heavier uh, and makes it go down. You say the things that are heavier than water will go down? Let's see. Here I have a rock. Is the rock heavier or lighter than water? Heavier. What'll it do if I put it in the aquarium? It'll You think it'll go to the bottom? There it goes. Here I have a cork. Is that lighter or heavier than air? Lighter. If I put that in the aquarium, what'll happen? But now the fish don't float and they don't sink, do they? How do you explain the uh, fact that that little bottle can be made to stand in the middle? Make it stand in the middle again. Right in the middle. Now Jane, how do you explain that little bottle, uh, the fact that the little bottle can be made to stand right in the middle? Well, there's buoyancy. That's the balance of, of air and water. And then you can just uh, stay in the middle because it's balanced, it's equal. You mean that the buoyancy on it is just exactly equal to its weight? Yes. So it stays right in the middle. Now, that would be very handy for these fish to be able to stay in the middle. What would they have to do if they were lighter than water? They have to come to the top. They would come to the top. What would they have to do to stay down? They'd have to have more weight. Well, they might have more weight, yes. They might go looking for some weight, eat some gravel or something. <laughs> uh, they could do that. Suppose that they were lighter than air, or lighter than the water. What's the only way that they could stay down? What would they have no to do? They'd have to, uh, move They'd have to keep swimming, wouldn't yeah. they? Have you ever been in a swimming pool where you've had to keep swimming? Yeah. Do you have to keep swimming to stay up? Yes. Yeah. You do? Is it tiring? Yeah. Wouldn't it be handy if you were the same weight as the water? Yeah. Just like the fish. What would the fish have to do if he was heavier than the water? He'd have to come back with me. Well, then he'd sink to the bottom yeah. and stay there, but what would he have to do if he wanted to come up? He'd have to swim up. He'd have to swim up. Do you think all fish are the same weight as water? We no. have some fish uh, no. known as darters, some people call them stone rollers, that always stay right down on the bottom of the uh, river, even in fast water. Do you think they're heavier or lighter than water? Heavier. Do you think they're heavier than water? I wonder what, uh, if a fish would stay the same weight as the water all the time. Or does a fish have to uh, uh, fix his weight? Do you think a fish can be, get lighter if he's too heavy? No. Do no. you think he can make himself lighter? No, no he just swims. He just keeps swimming. Very much. Over here we have a fish that I've taken apart. He has down here. Let's see what 
this fish has. This is a river chub. It's one we caught last spring and preserved. You see this air sac? You see the little air sac? Yes. Now when this fish was fresh, that little air sac was blown up just like the bladder in a football. What do you suppose he uses this little bladder for? Alright, so, so he can stay suspended in the water. What do you suppose he would do if he becomes too heavy? See this bladder, this football bladder's been punctured. All the air's out. What would he do if he were too heavy? Put more, Put more air in it. What would he do if he were too light? Uh, he would let some air out. And that way the fish can stay the same weight as the water so he doesn't have to get tired swimming up and down all the time. Let's try another little experiment. Here I have uh, some nails. You want to feel this, John? About what temperature is it? Cold. About the temperature of this room? Yeah. Let's put in some hot water. That should be hot. I'll just touch it lightly again. Is it hot? Yeah. Let's put it back in the water. And uh, then we're going to put it in one of these uh, jars. Bonnie, do you want to read the temperature of that water in that beaker? It's about not 20 degrees. Is that centigrade or Fahrenheit? Centigrade. That's 20 degrees centigrade. That's one of our uh, thermometers. Let's put it in here and get it hot. And then put it back in the water. Now will you touch it again? Cold again. It's cold. Feel the water. Let well, John feel the water. He felt the nail. Let him feel the water. Now feel the nail. About the same temperature. They're both about the same temperature. Let's put the number of nails in this hot water. We'll do this very well. We'll put quite a number in here. Heat them up. You think there's hot as this water? Yes. There should be. Let's take them over here. In this water. Feel them again. Did they all? How does it feel? They're still sort of warm. They're still sort of warm. Let's put them back. A little longer. How does it feel? They're cold now. They're cold. I wonder if the temperature of the water changed any. Did it? You yeah. want to read that again, Bonnie? Can you read any change? Oh, it's about 21. It's about 21. The water got a little warmer and the nails got cold. I wonder if that works the other way. Let's put these nails in ice water. This water should be cold. There's ice cubes in it. Now feel the nail. Now let's put the... We'll put the nail back in the same one. Now feel the nail in the water, John. Now feel the water. Well, they're about the same temperature. Maybe that one's a little colder. It was a little colder. Maybe we didn't hold it in there long enough. Hold it in a little longer. Try it again. The nail, now the water. They're about the same temperature. All right. Let's see if we can bring that thermometer back down to where it was. These should be cold. Put them back in the water. We read the thermometer again. It's about, it's not, it's just going down a little bit. It is going down just a little bit. The water is getting colder. Now we're going to with that, those facts in mind, we're going to try another little experiment. This time, we're going to compare you with a goldfish. Have you ever been compared with a goldfish? No. No, well, that'd be new, wouldn't it? Let's compare you with a goldfish. We'll just pour out this water. Go way over to our aquarium and get some water from our goldfish. What about the same mountain speaker? A little more in this one. A little bit more. Is that about the same amount? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we're ready for our little experiment. Now don't go away. You're going to be the subject. We're going to get our net from this side. We're going to catch one of these goldfish. How about Blackie? He's very easy to catch. Let's put Blackie in here. 
Now, Jane, I'm going to ask you to uh, let's take the temperature first. Let's see what temperature the water, the aquarium. Jane, do you want to read those temperatures? This one is about 25. About 25, all right. This one is 25. They're both 25, both the same temperature. Now, the fish is going to be in this one. And, Bonnie, will you put your finger down in this other one? Just put all your fingers down in that, right down in the water. So hold them there, way down in the water. That's right. We'll just take the thermometer out if it's in your way. I wonder what's going to happen to the temperature of this water. Do you want to make any guesses before we see? You think it'll stay the same? What's going to happen to the temperature of the water? You think it's going to warm up with your hand in it? Well, we'll have to see. Let's see if there's any change so far. Put the thermometer in, wait just a second. Is there any change? Only about one degree, so 26. It's about 26. What does this one read? It's still 25. It's still 25. Now, there are many ways in which you're different from a goldfish, but this shows one. What is one way in which you're different from a goldfish? Warm blood. Or have we have warm blood. What is your body temperature? Do you know? 98.6. That's right. When you have a fever, your mother uses that as a standard, doesn't she? 98.6. You're warm-blooded. What, what about this fish? I wonder what cold-blooded. He's cold-blooded. What's his temperature? If uh, we had a fish doctor and he took his temperature, I wonder what temperature he would get for the fish. Well, same temperature as the water. Now, I wonder if that is handy for these. Let's put Blackie back. Uh, Blackie doesn't like to be disturbed anymore. He's a little pet of ours. Now, I wonder if that's very handy for these fish to have the same temperature as the water. Why? Well, because if uh, it was a lot colder in the fish, they might die. You think the fish would die if the water was colder than the fish? When you go swimming in a pool, do you take on the temperature of the pool? Well, it's pretty cold at first, so that's why you don't take the same temperature. You don't take the same temperature. Your skin just gets the same temperature, and you don't get so much of a shock. You say you've been ducked. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Do you think you could stay in a pool for 24 hours? without coming out? No. no. Why not? Because you need air. Well, I suppose you keep your head above and get air. Because we'd be so cold, wouldn't we? You think you'd get very cold. Suppose you went in the pool now, if there was water in the pool. Suppose yeah. you went in the pool now. Do you think you could live there, swimming no. around the pool? No. Oh, you get very cold. So we see that these fish don't have to worry about the temperature of the water as long as it doesn't freeze, because they just take the same temperatures of water. Now we've seen two ways that the uh, fish are well equipped for living in the water. I wonder if there are some other ways that the fish are equipped for living in the water. Let's see here. Let's take a look at this fish. Oh, he's a wild one, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yes, he was wild. We caught him out in the wilds. He's excited. He doesn't like a television program, does he? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if we can... Uh, see any, any movement on his head. Look at his head. You see anything that's moving? His gills. His gills. Oh, his gills. What about his mouth? It's, it's, it's taking in water. It's taking in water. Looks like he's talking to you, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's taking in water. You see some of the little pieces of dust in there that go into his mouth and come out the side? Mm -hmm. Well, he's drinking lots of water, isn't he? Mm -hmm. is no. He let, it, let, it comes out of his gills and it takes him in the air. Oh, yes. He isn't drinking it, is he? No. It's going past his gills. John, why does he keep pushing water past his gills? So he could uh, keep alive. I mean, if All he right. can take it in that water and get the oxygen, then he's going to live. That's right. If you had gills like that, you'd be quite an underwater swimmer, wouldn't you? Yes, he is. Yes, you could stay under there. The fish is taking in the water, pushing him past his gills. I wonder if we could take a look at the gills of a fish. First, let's look at this fish's gills. To protect him, we're going to wrap him in wet cotton. Now, if you want to give me the net so we can catch him. This isn't going to hurt him too much. 
you can catch our fish. Did you know how notice how fast fish can move in the water? Mm -hmm. Wonder why that's handy to be able to move so fast. Mm -hmm. All right, and they do have enemies, don't they? Yes. Yes. They can get away from their enemies. Well, let's. There we caught him. Let's put him in the wet cotton. Pull the wet cotton around him. Now we see on his head, we see a little uh, bony patch, his gill cover. Let's lift it up, if we can, without hurting him. What do you see under the gill cover? What are those? What are those red things that you see under the gill covers? Air sacs? They're the gills, aren't they? What, are the gill, what color are the gills? What color are the gills? No, that's the gill cover. What color are the gills under the gills? They're red. I wonder why they're so red. We better put our little fish back. There, he's happy again. I wonder why the gills are so red. Have any idea what makes the gills red? No. Have you ever seen a fish after it's been out of water? Have someone's caught it and put it in a boat and it's been out of water for quite some time and then you look at the gills? What color do they get? You go fishing? Yeah, but not very often. Though. Not very often. Mm -hmm. Did you ever notice the color of the gills? No. Well, they get very pale pink. I wonder what makes the gills so red. All the water passes through. Well, fish passes lots of water through them. Does the water make them red? What carries the oxygen around in the fish's body? Blood. Blood. What do you suppose the gills are filled with? Blood. Did you ever hook a fish in the gills, and then when you pulled the hook out, you injured the fish? Did it bleed? There was lots of blood in the gill. Let's go back to our fish that we took apart, this preserved one, or this one we'll just turn him over. Here we see the gills. You see the large gills? Mm -hmm. I took the gill cover away. Now a fish has a clever little device on his gills because when he goes through the water he takes in lots of pieces of plant and so on. and. Uh, these pieces of plant would catch on his gills. So he has some little teeth, just like a comb. You see them? Mm -hmm. teeth, just like a comb. Those are called gill rakers. What do you suppose they do? Oh, That's right. They rake the plants out, and then the fish just spits them out. Have you ever noticed a fish take, uh, spit out some debris, a fish in the aquarium spitting out debris? Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. You watch your fish very closely, and uh, you'll see them do that. Now we've seen that these fish are very well uh, fixed for living in the water, aren't they? Yes. What about plants? Here I have a water plant. Here I have this one. Mm. A geranium. Uh, do you want to hand me the forceps there and we'll pull that long stick, that one, and we will pull the water plant out of this jar and see what we have here. Ah, long one. Let's put it right beside this one. Won't stand up, will it? No. The geranium has a stiff stem. This water plant has what kind of stem? Limber, yeah. Very limber stem, doesn't it? Yes. I wonder if uh, that has any value to the water plant. Let's see. This is a water plant. It's grown in a pond, and the pond is very shallow. We go along with the water. Let's make the water in this pond deeper. Sometimes when it rains, water runs into the pond and the pond gets deeper. Let's make the pond deeper. The pond is getting deeper. Watch the plant. The pond is getting still deeper. The plant goes right up with the water. It's a little tight in that jar, isn't it? It comes right up with the water. Well, then sometimes when the, after the pond's been deep, it gets shallow again. Yeah, the pond goes shallow. And it's getting more and more shallow. The plant goes right down with it. So we see that the uh, plants are also fixed uh, for living in water, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm? 
Let's see, is our fish running out of oxygen yet? We were waiting for him to do that. I wonder if he's running short of oxygen. Let's compare him with a fellow just like him. <coughs> Take a close look. Does one fish seem to be, we'll call it breathing, because that's the same as a breathing. Does one fish in the small, uh, seem to be breathing harder than the other? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which one seems to be breathing the hardest? How do you know that he's breathing harder? By gills. You can watch his gills, can't you? Mm -hmm. Could you count the number of times the gills jump? No. It's going too fast? I wonder if we could help that fish out. Many times when a fisherman goes fishing, he has lots of minnows in the minnow bucket. Have you done that? Yeah. Hmm. Did you ever have the minnows die? Some of them died. What did you notice the minnows doing just before they died? They breathe hard. They seem to breathe hard. Do you notice anything else? Well, what part of the bucket do you find them in? The top. They're all up at the top. I wonder why they're up at the top. Just get more, get more air. Get more, get more air? Maybe. When they die, though, they're light. Well, that's, they'd be a lot lighter. Well, that's a good observation. When they die, they get lighter than the water and float on top, don't they? But just before the fish die, we see the fish up at the top just grabbing as much of that water right from the surface as he can. You said he give, that gives him more air. Can you tell me how? There's more oxygen at the top. There's more oxygen. How does the oxygen get in the water at the top? Well, the air mixes with the water right up at the top. Now, one little trick that you can use, if your minerals don't seem to have enough oxygen, and they're all coming to the top, we were hoping this little minnow would come to the top, but the water seems to be too cold and hold too much oxygen. But I wonder if we can help him out, give him a little first aid. Let's give him a little air. You want to pump a little air in there? See if that will help him any. That's right, we bubble air. Up here, don't pump a little harder, that's it. If you're ever on a fishing trip and have a tire pump in the car, you bubble some air. Oh, yes, he's getting quite lively, isn't he? You can bubble some air into the water and keep the fish alive. His gills aren't moving as fast. You think his gills don't seem to be moving as fast? We're giving him more air. Now, I said that the cold water held more oxygen than the hot water. Is there some other way we could help this fish? Is there another way we could help this fish to get oxygen? Put ice in it. Now, I wonder if that would be a, a safe trick. When you prepare an aquarium, can you put fish from warm water into very cold water? No. Not right away. We'd have to do it very slowly, wouldn't we? Yeah. Probably if we would put this fish right up over the ice water, we'll add a little more water. Cool down the ice water. Down this water by putting it in the ice water. Put it down very slowly. I think this would help him to get oxygen. Now we have a few minutes left. Let's go back to our trick. You know, there's another way that you can do this, this trick. We will get a better soda straw. I'm going to put this soda straw in this rubber tube. You know, if you want to play with any friends, you can do it both ways. Here I have a little fruit jar cover. A hole was drilled in the fruit jar cover. We soldered a little pipe. You'd have to go down to the shop and do that. Solder a little pipe in there. Let's take the rubber off. My straw. Do you want to do that? Just pull on one side like this. I think. It jumps off, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's put this cover on. Now this is called uh, blow the little bottle down. Bonnie, do you want to blow on that to straw? Blow hard. Almost. Can you blow him down? Yeah. There he goes. 
When you stop blowing, what happens? It comes back up. It comes right back up. You can blow him down, can't you? All right, uh, getting very red from blowing. That's, <laughs> that's enough uh, to see what would happen. Can you explain why you can blow this little fellow down? Well, that's just about pressure on the water, too. It makes it more air and, and uh, makes more pressure on the water and pushes the water from the flask and make it heavier. All right. It makes the flask much heavier. Now, let's uh, review all the things that we have learned on this program today. First, let's start with our goldfish over in the aquarium. Let's see how much we've learned about the way that these fish are equipped or fitted to live in the water. John, do you want to tell us about one way that the fish are equipped or fitted to live well, in the water? Um, they can change with the, when the water changes, they can change their body temperature so they can live in it. And you say then that they keep the same temperature as the water? Yes. Is that very, a uh, very handy thing to have. Do you want to live in water? Yes. Yes. Does the water temperature outside change very much during the year? Yes. Yes. You know, if you go swimming too early in the spring, it's very cold, isn't it? Yeah. Then the summer gets quite warm. Mm -hmm. And now what temperature is it? Cold again. Yes. It's very, very cold. Bonnie, do you want to tell us some other ways that the fish are fitted well, to live in the water? Well, they have gills to uh, let the, uh, all the uh, water, after they've taken their uh, oxygen from the water, will they let the other water from the, get out the gills. All right. The uh, fish have gills, and they, they don't have to bother about breathing air like we do, do they? No. They just take the water past their gills and use the oxygen from the water. How are the gills fixed so that they, any uh, little pieces of plant, we'll call it debris, any little pieces of plant or foreign matter comes into their mouth, come in their mouth and they're breathing, how are the gills fixed so that they, right. that doesn't uh, tangle up on the gills? There's that little rake thing. You showed us uh, that um, catches on that, and then he can spit that out. Mm-hmm. Right. Any other way that the fish are equipped to live in the water? They have uh, air sacs, and like whenever they want to uh, balance themselves, if they're they go to the bottom, why they need more air, so they just uh, put more air in their air sacs. And if they're too light, they stay on the top. And when they go down, why they just let out some air from their air sacs. That's right. Now, we also saw that they were very fast, didn't we? Yes. But these goldfish don't swim very fast. They're pets. They're much easier to catch than some of the wild fish outside, aren't they? Yes. There is one other thing. We, when we catch fish or handle fish, we should always have our hands wet before we touch the fish because uh, the fish have a little slimy coating. You notice fish are just a little yeah. slimy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we take that off, then the fish will get sore spots and the fish may die. Now let's go to our plant. Well, that's way down here now, isn't it? I wonder how this plant, how did we find this plant was equipped to... Well, uh, well when you put more water in it, you'll go to the top. You take it out, you'll come to the bottom. All right. It has a limber stem so that it can yeah. move with the water. It has a very limber stem so that it can move up and down with the water, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think that you will uh, be able to go back to your school and uh, tell your students, your class members about this, or do they have a television set? They have a television set. Oh, they have a television set. They will know all about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're listening in, aren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. Well, that's good. You uh, have been a very, very good class. Let's Explore Science is brought to you as a part of Iowa TV School Time, presented by WOI-TV in cooperation with Iowa State College, the State University of Iowa, Iowa State Teachers College, and the State Department of Public Instruction. <laughs>